Swimming. It's an incredibly important life skill. Or at least it seems that way until you sit down and really think about it. For the vast majority of people today, learning to drive is a much better investment than learning to swim. And while it is nice to know how to swim, and it might even prove life-saving, a lot of people can comfortably go their whole lives without learning. It may surprise you all to know that Cukeser is not a strong swimmer. I mean, I can swim, just about, but not with enough confidence that I'd be getting into any body of water I can't stand up in outside of an immediate emergency. Once when I was a kid, I almost drowned in the swimming pool. For some reason, the lifeguard just watched for what felt like an eternity as I bobbed up and down in the water. Each moment submerged, spent frantically fighting with my airways plugged with water, and when I occasionally managed to surface, I had but a second to expel it, gasp for air, and scream before my airways were flooded again. And each time I surfaced, I was getting less and less air. I was reduced to an unthinking, panicked animal as I thrashed around desperately trying to escape, which only served to quicker exhaust my supply of air and make it harder to breathe. Eventually, in the agony of drowning, a strange feeling washed over me. I knew I was going to die. I realized the futility of my fighting and how it was only intensifying my discomfort and distress, and instead decided that if I were going to die, it would be best to make my last moments as peaceful as possible. I stopped fighting and accepted my fate. I felt calm. With my newfound calmness, I quite easily managed to prevent my drowning. That day, I had learned a lesson that would save me in future emergencies. Don't panic. Still doesn't make me a good swimmer, but I share that in common with the subject of today's video, Eric Musambani, who swam in the Summer Olympics in 2000, despite never having even seen a 50 meter swimming pool. Eric Musambani was born in Equatorial Guinea in 1978. After school, he developed an interest in swimming, which was odd as he didn't know how to swim. Football was the big thing in Equatorial Guinea, and Musambani found it difficult to even find a pool he could use to practice. Regardless, he was determined to pursue swimming. And so, in his early 20s, he went out to the lakes and rivers and asked the fishermen to teach him to swim. And that's how Olympic athlete Eric Musambani learned to swim, instructed by fishermen in a river at the age of 22. Musambani continued practicing until five months later, when he heard some peculiar news on the radio. A national swimming federation had just been established, and they were recruiting at a nearby hotel. It was the perfect opportunity for Eric to receive professional training and swim competitively. Except it wasn't. When he arrived at the hotel's pool, he found he was the only person to show up for trials. He was instructed to get in the water, but after only a few minutes, they told him to get out. They told him to start training because in three months, he'd be going to the Olympics to swim in the 100 meter freestyle. This came as a massive shock to Musambini. Not because his dream of becoming a top-level swimmer was basically realized in an instant, but because he had never heard of the Olympics. <laughs> he went to the library and looked it up. You may be wondering how someone who had never even heard of the Olympics was qualified to go when some people dedicate their entire lives to making their country's Olympic team and never make it. This was because the Olympic Committee awarded Equatorial Guinea a wild card as part of a program designed to encourage participation of developing countries. This meant Eric Musambini was guaranteed a spot, unlike most competitors who must hold a qualifying rank that proves they are one of the best in the world. With no dedicated training facilities in Equatorial Guinea, Musambani continued his swimming in the lakes and rivers, although now he also had access to the hotel pool the trials had been held at. This wasn't much help though, as the pool was only about 13 meters long, and he only had access to it from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> In September 2000, Eric Musambani was off to Sydney, Australia for the 2000 Summer Olympics. He had only learned to swim eight months beforehand. The flight from Equatorial Guinea to Australia included many stopovers and took three days. When he arrived, Musambani laid eyes on the Olympic swimming pool for the first time. 
He was horrified. At 50 metres, he had never seen such a long pool, and he would have to swim two lengths of the thing. This is where it became clear that Eric's training was not nearly good enough. The Olympic swimmers had technique. They coordinated their strokes with their breathing, keeping their faces underwater except during small windows in their strokes in which they inhaled. Eric had none of this. Eric just swam but he was really struggling in this 50 meter pool during practice. He could only make it halfway. He watched the other swimmers to observe what they did, and he often asked people around the pool for help. One South African coach was suspicious of this. Musambani clearly did not belong here. After verifying that he was indeed competing in the games, he informed Musambani of his first mistake. The shorts he bought in the second-hand shop were non-regulation, and he would be automatically disqualified wearing them. Instead, the coach gave him a pair of competition trunks and some goggles, and spent some time with Eric instructing him and helping out with his technique. On the 19th of September, the time had come for Eric Musambini to compete in the 100 meter freestyle. There were 70 other competitors. In the opening heat, Eric would be swimming with two others, a swimmer from Nigeria and a swimmer from Tajikistan. The three men lined up at the blocks and waited for the signal. Well, actually, no, they didn't. The two other fellas jumped in prematurely and were disqualified for false starts. An official informed Musambini he would now do his laps alone. This was an absolute nightmare for Musambini. The venue held 17,500 seats and all eyes would be on him and him alone in an event he didn't even think he could finish. He was going to humiliate himself and his country. He told the official, please, I can't do it, but he had to. Musambani got up on the block again. He was scared. There was no way he would qualify for the semi-finals, but that didn't even matter. All that mattered to him now was the 50 meters ahead of him. That would be a struggle, but then another 50 meters back? Impossible. Or was it? He had learned a lot from his time here. People had helped him. He had gone from swimming in African rivers to training in the Olympic pool in a very short time. So what did that say about Eric Musambani? It said he was a conqueror. Everyone else had professional instructors and full-fledged training facilities. That's what made them champions. But Eric had something else, and that's what made him a conqueror. So why shouldn't he make the 100 meters? Why shouldn't he make the podium? Why shouldn't he come back to his country with the gold he won for them draped around his neck? The champions have had their time. Now it's time for a conqueror to show what he can do. <laughs> ah! So, how do you like my swimming? So yeah, he, he swam abysmally, incredibly slow, just about as slow as a human can swim before they sink. After he made the first lap, he started to really struggle. This guy was on the verge of drowning. Officials watched him with eagle eyes as it looked like someone was going to have to jump in to save him. He drifted by the lane rope as if to grab hold of it to save himself, which would disqualify him. But the crowd weren't laughing at Eric. They were cheering. They were completely behind him. He wanted to give up, but he couldn't let the crowd down. He couldn't let his country down. He couldn't let himself down. Eric Musambani finished the race. His time was 1.52.72. After the ordeal, Musambani was completely exhausted. When he got back to the changing rooms, he fainted. After regaining consciousness, he asked, What am I doing here? He slept for the rest of the day.
Musambani's time of 152.72 put him 71st out of 71 competitors. The 70th place finisher was a whole 50 seconds faster. The last place in the women's event was 33 seconds faster than Musambini. In fact, even some of the 200 meter competitors had faster times than Musambini. He has by far the slowest Olympic time in recorded history. But that didn't really matter. He completed the event through sheer determination. That's what the Olympic spirit is all about, and the people loved him for it. He became very popular at the Olympic Village and earned the nickname Eric the Eel. But that wasn't the end of Equatorial Guinea's swimming efforts at the 2000 Summer Olympics. No, the eyes of the world turned to Paula Barilla Belopa, who was competing for Equatorial Guinea in the women's 50 meter freestyle. She also clocked the slowest time ever, earning her the nickname Paula the Crawler. <laughs> This event garnered worldwide attention, and the two became beloved heroes, as brands rushed to offer them promotional work. On their return to Equatorial Guinea, the president announced that they would build pools for the swimmers of the country's future. And so they did. Eric Musambani continued swimming, and by the time the next Olympics rolled around in 2004, he had shaved a full minute off his time, which is quite impressive, but you also have to remember most of the competitors complete this race under a minute. If they shaved a full minute off their times, they would literally complete the race before it even begins. Unfortunately, he was unable to compete in the 2004 games due to an error with his application form. <laughs> Lol. Eric the Eel never competed in the Olympic Games again, but in 2012 he was appointed coach of the National Swimming Squad, so he still makes it to the Olympics. What a great story. It had everything. Humour, emotion, it even had a happy ending. Although, you know, I'm not sure how happy I'd be if my coach for the Olympics was a guy who literally held the slowest time ever. A guy whose nickname is a joke about how he's a crappy swimmer. That'd be like training for boxing and the coach is called Punching Bag Paddy. Well, anyway, if you enjoyed the story, or more specifically my presentation of it, consider subscribing to see more videos from me. And if you're already subscribed, why not buy a membership for access to updates on the channel and the upcoming videos, as well as unique emojis you can use in the comments. Or you could buy a shirt. Simpler to understand, I suppose. And here's something else for you to understand. Thank you. Adrian, I'm not sure he's going to make it, is he? No, he is. This is, this is the Olympics. He's got 17,000 people shouting for him. Eric Lusambani of Equatorial Guinea wins heat one of the men's 100 metres freestyle. Well, I thought I'd seen...